All right, so this is unit two, activity one, and we're gonna start off with the language of fashion. So one of the ideas that I want you to consider in this activity is a quote by Ambrose Bierce. Um, he says, fashion is a despot whom the wise ridicule and obey. So if you don't know what despot means, Google it. Um, and then once you know what that word means, think of the quotation and decide if you think this is accurate. Um, so this is your own opinion. There's no wrong answer. But I think that it's really interesting because we all, um, we all wear clothes. <laughs> so we all, um, follow certain styles and fashions, whether we want to think that we do or not. Um, so fashion is something that really affects everyone, whether or not they're interested in it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the difference between style and design. And to have that conversation, we need to talk a little bit about fashion nomenclature. So every industry, trade, profession, whatever you decide to do, um, has its own language, which allows its members to communicate in a concise and precise manner. And of course, the fashion industry is no different. So what makes the language of fashion so interesting are the various levels and disciplines involved. So there's like the science and research part, there's the merchandising part, there's the special events and events planning. Um, each component piece is, is a language of its own. So the textile chemists and the co colorists use their own language, and the fabric producers use their own language, and wholesale marketers and distributors have their own nomenclature. Um, so this basic jargon of the trade is what I hope to introduce you to in this unit. Um, and then if you do end up having a career in fashion, you are going to learn more. So um, the secondary market, so design, production, and distribution, has developed um, certain words to streamline and enhance the accuracy of verbal information when they're talking to each other. So at this level, in grade 12, I want you to understand the difference between three words. And maybe you've thought about this before, but maybe you haven't. Style, design, and fashion. Have you heard these, used being, uh, these words being used interchangeably? Like saying something's in style or something's in fashion, or the design of the dress is like this, or the style of the dress is like this. These words have very precise and very different meanings in the fashion industry, so we really need to hone in on that. So first off, we're going to start with style. So um, a trip to the fashion section of a bookstore will reinforce your need to understand the concept of style. A style refers to a very specific apparel product. So garment styles include dresses, shirts, skirts, pants, jackets, coats. Um, a style has one or more distinct features that can distinguish it from another apparel product. So a dress is different than a skirt. A turtleneck is different from a bateau neck. Some things are obvious. And then as we get to different um, nomenclature, different words for things, um, you might not know what a bateau neck is. So if you didn't know what that was, you would still need to know that a turtleneck is different from it. So some garment style names are linked to the past. So the word coat comes from the English word cloak. The word jacket is derived from the old French word jacket or little coat. Um, these words have history and meaning just like any other English word. Um, there are different apparel product styles just as there are different fabric styles. So each fabric has its own features. We're going to talk about this in unit three and four. So like silk has a specific weave, fiber content, denim has, it has different qualities than fleece for mitts. Um, and then again, it's different from like tulle for a wedding veil. So the points that I need you to know about for style is that style has a distinct feature and characteristic appearance. And the second is that styles never change. A turtleneck is a turtleneck is a turtleneck. However, certain turtlenecks might go in and out of fashion and certain turtlenecks might have different design features. All right. So um, I want you to pause me now and you can go to the Fashion Resource Center. 
Um, this is going to help you learn more about garment styles and help you have some of that vocabulary that you might need. All right, so we're back. So you've looked at garment styles and what I want to just remind you is garment and accessory styles never change. So an accessory style does not change, but it may be out of fashion or in fashion at a certain time. So a choker is a choker. Uh, chokers were out and now they're back in. Um, so the style never changes. Now we're going to talk about things that do change. So design. So the design is an inter interpretation within a style. So the line might change, the shape, the color, the texture, the notions, the little things on it, the embellishments, the trims, they all might be different, but the style is consistent. So when a style becomes fashionable, different designs of that style are created. So if the like mini skirt comes back, then different designs of that style of mini skirt are created. Um, the possible design or interpretation of a style is limitless and this is when designers really get to have fun with things because they get to see what styles are in fashion and then they get to change their design to make something unique and um, desirable to wear. So here we go with the word fashion. In this course I want you to think of fashion as an accepted style or design or both during a particular time. So a style doesn't become fashion until consumers decide to purchase that style. So let's say a jean skirt. Jean skirts are not fashionable until people are buying jean skirts. Lots. It's not just one little old person buying a jean skirt. It's a, a, a chunk of consumers are purchasing that style. So this, um, a style remains in fashion only as customers continue to purchase it, so as soon as people stop buying it, it's not in fashion anymore. Fashion is ultimately based on social acceptance. Um, such acceptance is usually limited to a particular group of people, so you want to fit in with a particular group, a particular age of people, a particular occupation of people, and potentially even in a particular location. So what people wear in downtown Toronto, um, let's say young professional women in their 30s, what they wear in Toronto is totally different than what young professional women wear in Sarnia to go to work. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So classic quote from Karl Lagerfeld, you might remember he worked with Chanel, there's no fashion if nobody buys it. So the last thing we're going to touch on before we finish up is fashion, fashion merchandising. So merchandise is stuff, and this stuff is grouped into different categories. Um, something referred to as a staple item is something that people have no matter what. So socks, underwear, sleepwear, things that don't really go in or out of style, um, they, they have them. There might be different designs of things that um, go in and out of style, like like maybe like boy style briefs for underwear and then like a thong or a tanga or something along those lines, but um, everyone has socks, everyone has underwear. The other um, category is fashion merchandise. So fashion merchandise is are things that people want but they don't necessarily need. So examples of these fashion things, um, words that might have something to do with them is fad. Um, what we are going to do is, since you've learned the meaning of style, design, and fashion, um, what we're going to be doing in the activity is learning some more relevant terms. So we're going to be defining these terms and once you click on the activity, and we're going to be adding to like a fashion glossary. And the fashion glossary we should have started in Unit you know, 1, Activity 3. So this is kind of your own little place where you're putting these new words. Because if you come across them in a unit summative, you're going to need to address that. So some of these words, um, accessories, menswear, classic, um, those have to do with certain categories that things are grouped into. 
but also there are other words like retro um, that refers to a particular type of clothing or like a sample sale that refers to a particular event with a particular type of clothing. So however you can group it, um, there is a word for it likely. So I hope that gives you enough to understand the difference between design, style, and fashion. And then when we go into unit two, activity one, the assignment page, um, you're going to be looking more in depth at a fashion word of your choosing. So have fun.